A special intro for specifically only Jujutsu Kaisen. The following is not the anime Jujutsu Kaisen. If you have accidentally clicked on Shonen Archive episode over 77, 73 maybe? <laughs> Featuring Zenrado, Jujutsu Kaisen episodes this or that. It is not what you're looking for. I know Crunchyroll is a shitty site. It broke down for me too. But you're going to have to go for, uh, pay for Crunchy. Or find an illegal streaming site if you want to watch actual Jujutsu Kaisen. This is just something where we talk about it. You've been warned. Now, theme song can play. And then the intro can play where I say, Hello everyone and welcome back to Shonen Archive. I'm Wilkie and I'm here with Zenra. Hello. What Shonen Archive? Well, I just screamed it at the beginning of the show, but Shonen Archive is a series in which me and Zen have dedicated ourselves to watching every single Shonen Jump anime that is available to us in English in some capacity. Our main one being Gintama, our second one being, um... Sorry, excuse me, I had to <laughs> swallow some, <laughs> this up spit real quick. Jujutsu Kaisen, and then Kuroko's Basketball, the third one that we always say we will get back to, which next week, for sure, <laughs> now that I'm back in the groove of watching <laughs> totally anime. Totally, this time. Totally, legitimately, for sure. 100%, it's next week. But today, we're going to be talking about Jujutsu Kaisen, episodes 38 and 39, which had come out. Um, and these are really quick episodes they went by very 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 quickly but i guess that's kind of the feeling you get when you're in an ongoing arc in the middle of it <laughs> you're going yeah. through it so zen why don't you tell us about episode 38 fluctuations did i say that right Fl fluctuations yeah that that's that's how you pronounce it yeah yeah yep I always second ever since the uh, the pecan incident. I've always second guessed myself on every single thing I say. <laughs> so anyway, episode thirty eight fluctuations. Go ahead, Zen, take it away. So uh, Mei Mei is fighting the the silly smallpox demon, and she's in its domain, and she keeps getting locked in coffins and shit. She, she uh, uh, special guest the boulder from Demon Slayer appears. Yeah, <laughs> keeps dropping on top of it. It's not just the. Um, and just she the figures out like, oh, okay. I bet the domain is targeting the person that has the most cursed energy. Um, so she pumps one of her crows, which then makes the crow get targeted instead of her. Mm -hmm. So uh, Mei Mei tells her brother, like, hey, you um, die for me. You make yourself the target. By amping your cursed energy so that I am not the target, and then uh, I will I will fight it. Uh, it works. She cuts its like arm off. Uh, it runs away. Uh, we find out that the kid was fine because he used simple domain to keep himself from getting blasted by the the coffin thing. Um, they keep looking for the the curse that ran away. And it jumps out to, to get her, and it gets killed by a crow that flies through and blasts her. Uh, she does... Uh, what, what is the name of this movie? Uh, she does hits him with a big-ass bird, basically. She makes a bird suicide bomb the guy. Yeah, the, her... Uh, yes, she suicide bombs yeah. the... <laughs> she chances the bird. She suicide bombs it with a, with a bird, uh, mm. which kills it. They open up... Uh, the, the, the domain releases them because of that, and then she goes to confront uh, Ghetto, fake Ghetto. Then we cut back to Team Nanami, who's there with... Uh, it's like Nanami, Naobito, and Maki, and they're on their way to try to get to Gojo, because Nanami's filling them in about, you know, oh, Gojo's sealed, yada yada. Um... They end up getting down to the bottom of the station, and then another curse is there, and he's a little a little octopus boy. Uh, and they're like, look at this little octopus boy. Um, they end up fighting it, and now Obito is there, who lands a, a big hit on it, uh, and starts fighting him with his kind of pretty cool ability. It's uh, the projection sorcery ability, which basically makes him like a still frame of animation. Um, yep. And they're like having some big debate about... like. The, the the squid boy Dagon is like 
angry about his allies getting killed, and he's trying to like say, you know, we have names, we're conscious things. And now Beto is just like, bro, doesn't modern animation suck? Isn't it just ass <laughs> nowadays? He starts uh, bitching about all those Twitter accounts who point the Ghibli gifs at 60 frames per second. Yeah, exactly. Um, so they're all fighting at the same time, and they're like, okay, this guy's pretty strong. Um, he ends up activating his domain expansion, which puts them into the same beach that uh, all of the curses hang out at in Season 1 when they're just, like, vibing together. Hmm. They're just in Dagon's domain the whole time. Uh, now Vito counters the domain expansion by using Falling Blossom Emotion, which blocks most of the bigger hits. So he amps more of his power onto Now Vito and leaves the rest over to Anonymy because he does not find uh, Maki to be a particularly big threat. Uh, as they're fighting... Megami shows up, and he, he kind of gets in by opening a hole in the domain with his own. Uh, and he gives Maki playful cloud so that Maki can basically help fight, essentially. Uh, they're trying to hold him off so they can escape while Megami uh, opens up the domain barrier by using his domain. Uh, it's not entirely working at first, and then they're like, shit, we need to... Uh, Make sure that not only we can we get the hole big enough for everyone to get out, but it needs to be big enough that you can get out without it closing before you can leave. Uh, they all rush over to the hole to, to get out. Dagon goes to stop them. And then uh, before they can jump out, Toji Fushigoro jumps through into the domain. And Bro's happy to be here. He is very happy to be here. He's never looked more... He looks so enticing. He looks like he's ready to potentially... He actually reminds me of the opening scene with Rize on the beach in Persona 4. That's how happy he seems to be in the current situation that he's in. Um, yeah, this episode. So, first off, before we actually get into it, didn't, I? you might know a little bit more about this, but were people weirdly angry about this episode? Yeah, there's some clips that are bad. Uh, this is the clip that made the one animator be like, I guess I'll just work the rest of my career being the animator that ruined a fucking masterpiece because the, the shot was so bad. Really? What What was the... I mean, it, it wasn't the strongest, that's for sure, but what was it that... Was the, uh, like... it's, I know the, the really bad one is like the shot where now Beto is stomping on Dagon and his foot moves like 0 0.001 miles an hour and just like gently sets on the ground. It, it's really bad. Mm. Um, I, I I could probably find the clip if I had more time, but it's uh, okay. it, it was awful, and this was what started the whole like, uh, how dare you criticize Mappa? They're doing their best, like Twitter breakdown thing. The old the ultimate battle that is a never winning battle, which is that you can't, you should be able to call out something when it is bad. But at the same time, you can't. You keep using the excuse of like, well, they're overworked. Well, it's like that's not my problem. If well, are... it's not even that, but it's like you have to call it out if you want the studio to stop overworking them. Like you're not, yeah. you're not gonna be just like, oh, okay, this can just be ass. That's fine. I don't want to hurt their feelings. It can just suck. Because yeah. then the studio would be like, great, we can keep working them like this yeah, forever. Yeah, no, no, no. The that like the solution that people think of like is of like how do you fix bad animation is not keep overworking them. The answer is to let them have a rest. <laughs> it is that is not how the the job works where if you keep having people keep doing it it's not like it magically gets better that's not the that has never been proven the way to get something done correctly or done well and i can say that as someone who has at least tried their hand at animation as a bit if i was constantly tired if you get just kept telling me okay but make it better i'd give up because i i need the time to, you actually it's much better to have a rest so you can look back and see like oh wait i see what's actually wrong here it's very hard to find something wrong when you've been working on something for so long, you miss it. That's why it's also good to have other people look at your shit. So they can tell you, like, oh, this is a fresh pair of eyes. This looks bad. You should make that look less bad. <laughs> and then you go, all right, guess it's yeah, time to work I mean, on it. it sounds like even the animator didn't think it looked good. But, I mean, what? there's nothing they can do about it. And it, it feels weird to equate criticism of the studio with criticism of the individual guy yeah. that... I don't know the name of the fucking guy that worked on every frame of this show. 
No, but apparently some people do, and that's always been very weird to me. I'm sure some people do, which, yeah, I mean, that seems but, strange, um, but, like, but I'm all for know, giving man. people the, the props. Don't, like, don't take it as that way, but at the same time, it's not like we're out here being like, actually, we are out here being like, Chuck Avery did this frame. It's a little bit different. <laughs> it's, it's, I don't know. It's, it's a very hard thing to do. Well, I think, like, just because people who are super into animation know every single animator most people don't and yeah. so people who are super into animation will see people being like wow this cut fucking sucks and in their head they're like wow they're talking shit about this guy and they're like no they're not they don't even know who the fuck that is yeah they're just saying hey this product looks bad yeah. i would like this product to not look bad and sometimes people release stuff that they know is bad because they just simply ran out of time it's like we didn't have anything to do with it that doesn't shield them from the criticism and a lot of the times they know and agree so it's a real roundabout way. The, the only, the only really logistically, the only thing that is being criticized is the company, because the company should have never allowed this to go through. And if the issue was that they were overworked, they should have let them <laughs> rest. Very simple solutions, but of course, none of that is ever simple in a conversational sphere where one person says something and about twenty-seven other people take it to mean something completely different. <laughs> so it's not, it's yeah, not an easy. I, thing. I don't know, and it's like you said, even if. It's, you know, whatever the reason is, because I, I totally co signed that it's not this guy's fault because he yeah. had no fucking time to do it. Like, everyone's aware that the season two was rushed to shit. Like, you got the one good at the UG Chozo episode was clearly where all of that goes. All of it went fine. Season two was crazy rushed. I'm not blaming any individual guy. Like, because I don't think anyone could have done a good job with the time frame, right? No, it would have been very But, like, hard. if you can't criticize it, and you can't say, like, hey, this sucks right here. This is bad. Then the studio that can force these people to churn it out in these awful time frames has no reason not to do that. Right? right. Like, if yeah. everyone just says, oh, hey, this is good, actually, and fine. I don't want the animator to feel sad, so it's fine. Like, if the animator feels bad about it, he shouldn't feel bad about it because Twitter doesn't like it. He should feel bad about it because the circumstances of his job forced him to do a shitty job. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And uh yeah, that's really how it goes. This is a this is an a, a, a continuous conversation when it comes to this industry though. And this is something that we'll likely have to talk about this every single time we talk about a new Shonen Jump anime. We will talk, we'll talk about this again likely when Chainsaw Man comes back. We will talk about this for whenever there's a new anime where it does not live up to what we want it and it's because you just kind of have to, you just kind of have to have these conversations. Like this is the only way that the companies will know because if you just give, keep giving them more outs to what they do or you make excuses for them, they'll just continue this behavior and that's just not right and they should be stopped. But yeah, I just wanted to get that out there right now. In terms of the actual episode, I thought it was okay. For some reason, I thought like this went by crazy fast. Did you feel the same way about that or is that just me? Uh, a little bit, yeah. Um. Not necessarily a bad way, and I don't. I think this is just just like maybe because it's it feels longer in the series mm -hmm. or like in the manga because it's multiple chapters, and this basically was just like Koji shows up and beats Dagon's ass, and that's it. Yeah. Um. But not that much really happens. N yeah. In the domain, in the manga, either it just kind of it does feel like Dagon went by almost like barely any time at all. <laughs> It, it also feels weird to just have him in here and he immediately has, like, a known... Like, he knows the other ones. He feels bad for them. But at the same time, yeah, other if other than you bringing up the fact that this is the beach they spent out... They spent time in, I have ne never seen him up until this point and I had honestly had forgotten him <laughs> other than I remember... Can, the yeah, he, he is there when they're hanging out in the beach. He's just a little squid head. Oh, um, okay. That was something... But he is there. That was something that I just never paid attention to, so maybe that's on me, but I did like his motivations, at least, where he's feeling bad, and it continues this thing that they've been saying for a long time, which is, like, we are... It's something that they never want to acknowledge, which is that they are things that actually have feelings, because it's much easier to just automatically kill them when you know that they're, like, some kind of demon that doesn't actually have those kind of familiar ties to them or something it's much easier to just say like oh they're monsters they don't think about that but i always like it when they show that kind of side to them 
Uh, in terms of the actual fight, I'm glad to finally kind of have a better understanding about how the 20 frames per for a second ability works. <laughs> Because in the manga, yes, it was I re- explained really terribly in the manga. It, it made almost no sense. Yes, I remember that is that has always been my poster child for. It's okay to just kind of roll with it in Jujutsu Kaisen. <laughs> I don't need to know how every ability works. And it started with a twenty frames per second uh, ability because it made no sense. But in here, that actually they actually show like animation frames and stuff. Like, they actually show and make it make sense. And I thought, like, oh, thank you. I've been going so many years now just not knowing how this ability works and just saying, okay, this seems like a really cool ability, but I have no idea how it works. And that's fine because this is on a character that uh, is this old man. And I remember really not liking this character and then also being kind of angry that he had a really cool ability at the same time. Because <laughs> he he's yeah. shown here, he's yeah, just kind of like fair. a drunk asshole and he is an asshole for a lot of it uh the other side about it i really like the continuation of showing how badly uh they were reliant on gojo because they say right up front both in both fights when mei is fighting she says like no one is as strong except for gojo and then when uh they talk about the old man they say no one is as fast except for gojo <laughs> yep <laughs> they really hammer home this one guy really was just everything, <laughs> and that's why things are going very bad. And you can see here, even with how good uh, you've known Nanami, like it takes four dudes to fight Dag- uh, D- uh, Dagon, and they are not doing well the second that domain comes out. And at this point, it really feels like almost, I mean, this has always been true. I don't know how I feel about domains anymore. Because I realize that the instant kill ability makes them feel a little bit crazy OP. I'm not 100% sure how you can make most fights where a domain expansion happens and then whoever just gets it wins. But at least for this one... Well, they do that by usually by having the other person also have one. Yeah, that's usually... But this fight doesn't, so it's just people without one fighting someone with one. So it's it's tough. Yeah, yeah. And... (laughs) <laughs> this is also uh, funny because the old man loses his left arm, he says. Um, and it reminds me that the most debilitating uh, injury that you can have in Jujutsu Kaisen is to lose an arm. <laughs> yeah, because you can't use your domain anymore. Yeah, it is uh, It is devastating <laughs> if you lose your arm. It is uh, a tantamount to... Unless a... you're Gojo, because Gojo can activate his with only one hand. Yes, exactly. And then there is one... No, we can't, uh, they would, dol- it would dolphin noise it, but I don't want to dolphin noise it, so, but there is another thing that comes up later, I think. But either way, it was, it was an okay episode. It was uh, not my favorite of the season two ones, but there was still stuff to watch, and by the end of it, I was just kind of going like, yeah, this is, this is go, this went by very fast, but like you said, there's not really much to do yeah, here. Yeah, there's only so much you can show of, like, people get hit by fucking sea animals yeah <laughs> you know before you gotta move on oh yeah i don't need a, a dragon ball z style fight where they spend like the next three episodes fighting this guy and slowly losing <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that, getting that's... hit by otters progressively <laughs> okay i might want that <laughs> if he starts chucking <laughs> otters at him i'm back in <laughs> fear <Sure>. my goldfish <laughs> more things like that kakarobachi <laughs> <laughs> yeah exactly boom <laughs> this is how we saved it how do you feel, Zen? Uh, yeah, it was fine. Um, obviously, the the Toji reveal was the big thing. Was the big like yeah. cool moment. Um, there was. I liked watching Nabuto fight. I think his technique is really cool. Um, it gets used cooler later by Dolphin Noise. Mm-hmm. Um, but it was still neat seeing it, and seeing it in motion was very cool because that's. I mean, obviously, it's an animation based technique, so like. When yeah. it was completely still, it was like mm, kind of struggling to follow what's going on right now. It, it just reminded. Um, I just had flashbacks of animation class. Yeah. While I was watching the fight, I was like, "Oh God, <laughs> it's back!" But uh, yeah, it was it was fine. Mm-hmm. It wasn't. It was nowhere near UG versus Choso, but it was fine. Yeah, exactly. Let's move on to episode thirty-nine. Which is called Fluctuations Part 2, the continuation of the easy titles. <laughs> Go ahead, Zed. <laughs> uh, Alright, so Toji comes in. Uh, he is, like, 
I forget the reasoning as to why he's like crazed. Uh, uh, they try and explain something it. about his. Yeah, it's by all means, try to explain. It. Yeah, I think I remember they're saying like they basically there was a window in which this body would have disappeared, but now it's gone because he technically like technically his body would disappear if he uses cursed energy, but Toji doesn't use cursed energy. So he's not really expending anything. He's so he's just kind of vibing. He's now just kind of like a zombie man where all he's doing now is fighting the strongest thing that he can find. I think that was the basic understanding. I think the understanding was that there was a very brief window of time where he they could have easily gotten rid of him after, but because of the weird circumstances around his body, it just doesn't work anymore. That's as close as we get to like an explanation. Uh, yeah, and... I mean, I know why he's not like disappearing, but I don't remember why he doesn't retain his his brain because he he had his mind earlier. And he doesn't now. I don't remember the exact reason why he's just like crazed now. I guess the oh, technique okay. just like fucked it up. I don't know. Yeah, it might be. But anyway, he starts fighting Dagon. Uh, nobody recognizes him except for now Vito, who's like, "Oh shit!" <laughs> <It's> Toji. <laughs> Uh, Toji starts beating the ever-loving shit out of Dagon. Um, he ends up stealing Playful Cloud from Maki and grabs it away and just, like, just absolutely obliterates this dude. Uh, he sharpens the ends of Playful Cloud into, like, knives. Um, and then he, he, it's kind of brutal. He's, like, he jumps onto him and he's, like, got him around the hips with his legs and he's just stabbing him in the head over and over again with the two sharp ends of Playful Cloud. Well, there's, like, blood splattering everywhere and stuff. It's, mm -hmm. it's pretty sick, actually. The only reason they could uh, get away with this is that he had purple blood. Yeah, it was it was purple blood, and it kept cutting away. Yep. When, when it was, like, really gruesome. Um, but the domain goes down. Um... Toji saves them all, but now they're like, shit, is this guy going to kill us now? Like, what, what's happening? <laughs> um, he grabs Megami and then bails. Uh, just, like, pieces out with him. Um, and he's like, wow, this guy's even stronger, faster than Sukuna it was. Uh, which is really funny, because that was, like, two fingers. <laughs> but still. <laughs> um, Jogo shows up, and he's like, ah, Dagon is gone. That sucks. Uh, I'm very sad about that. And then he just absolutely like murks everybody. Uh, he blasts Nanami. He blasts uh, Maki. And then now Bito starts to try to fight him. And then uh, he gets blasted as well with like a bunch of fire all over the place. Yeah, it was like a three. Uh, he gets he it doesn't worst. die because because Jogo goes to kill him. But then he's like, oh shit, it's Sukuna somewhere, and he he runs off. Um, the two girls that are part of Ghetto's family, uh, the real Ghetto, not fake Ghetto, mm -hmm. uh, find Yuji's body when he's like knocked out from fighting Choso. Um, they're like he's they're like uh, or no, Jogo finds him too, and he's like, hey, wh how many fingers did you just give him? And they're like, I'm not telling you shit. Um, and he shoots fire at them. And then he ends up shoving more fingers down Yuji's throat, basically, uh, which makes Sukuna kind of like forcefully manifest. And it looks like the two girls live. They, they survived his fire attack, and they're like, oh, okay, interesting. But they end up not fighting uh, because Sukuna wakes up, and he stands up and heals Yuji's body, and then he's like, all right, you need to get the fuck away from me. I'm pissed right now. Sukuna has aura, man. Sukuna and Yuji's body just has aura. This is, this is a cool dude. He does. Uh, this scene is so good. Man, we, we can't. They, uh, can't dolphin they stand up. And he's like, <laughs> like, good. And he's like, I want, you to, I want you to bow, basically. Um, and he's like, you're, or he says, you're holding your heads too high to be standing near me. And so the two girls immediately drop straight to the ground. And jo uh, Jogo only goes on one knee which then cuts the top of his head off <laughs> because he was too high up in the air. Um, and so he tells him, like, you are you value yourself too highly, I guess. Um, so he walks over to the girls who dropped all the way to the ground, and he's like, all right, what do you what do you want from me? Yeah, what, 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 tell me what you were trying to wake me up for. Um, then he kills one of the girls because they are like, oh, we'll give you a finger if you kill 
the fake ghetto for us. And he's like, ah, you can't order me around just for one or two fingers. You think I give you? I'm going to listen to you just because you want me to. Uh, he kills one of them. One of the girls tries to then get revenge, and he immediately kills her too in pretty brutal fashion, where he uh, cuts the top of her head in half and then completely eviscerates like her entire body with his curse technique. Like a grate of cheese, like a cheese grater. Yes, fucking... just like absolutely cubes her. Um, she's just a pile of meat. Get cubed, idiot. And then uh, Jogo, and he's like, "All right, what do you want now?" And he's like, "I don't want anything." And he's like, "Listen, I don't, I don't know, man." My job is just to get you out. Like, that's just what I'm here for. Why don't you take over Yuji's body now so that you can stay? And Sukuna's like, I got I got other plans. I don't need to do that. I don't need your help. Um, so he's like, all right, you know what? Why don't we fight? And if you hit me even one time, I will team up with you right now. And we'll kill every human in the city except for Megami. Um, and Joe goes like, all right, deal. And they go to fight. Mm-hmm. And that's where it lands off. Oh, man. This is a uh, this is a real good like this is a real fun episode. <laughs> I really like this one. This is funny enough. This is just the payoff because part one is a lot of the setup and this is all the payoff to it basically. So I really like the part where Toji, um, the way that he he does like the the Frieza move. Like remember that part in Dragon Ball Z where Frieza randomly eats a crab. <laughs> he kind of yeah. does that where he like <laughs> yeah. he bites a fish <laughs> he doesn't go full frieza and actually eat it but he just he does grab the fish by his teeth uh the way he's fights uh against dagon is amazing because he fights like a fucking feral animal <laughs> even the way that he like um and it's great because seeing everyone's reaction to him is like uh hilarious like when he starts like doing that with playful cloud and they're like what is he doing oh god he's sharpening playful cloud <laughs> and he just starts like fucking stabbing him and he stabs him so many times and it is an insane scene he even does like a full-on muda style scene where he's just like going do 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 which is funny because they it's not voiced he's not like saying anything about any of this just to make it uh, that much more creepy. But it did make me think, like, oh, that's kind of a waste. Not to have him let's say something. <laughs> Given that who his uh, voice actor is. Um, also, like, the part in the beginning where he takes back Playful Cloud. And Maki's like, what the hell? He took that. He, he doesn't have any cursed energy. He just took that off of pure raw strength. Me, Maki, the strongest human being. <laughs> She does. She does take a huge offense over the being out strengthened by yeah, someone. Yeah, she gets she gets real grumpy about it. Yeah, she does, which is pretty funny. Um, and yeah, and the uh, uh, and then I like the other part. So with Jogo, it's really funny because I feel like every single time up until this moment, Jogo typically loses, but that's because he's always been fighting against Gojo. That is the only other person I can think of that go that uh, Jogo has ever fought, and Gojo also makes it seem so easy. So yep. it was kind of funny to see him fight someone who was not Gojo, and then realize, oh wait, no, he's actually insane. <laughs> yeah, he's actually unbelievably strong. Yeah, uh, it's extra funny because these are like the the like uh, now Vito is like the strongest dude. He's the leader of the fucking Zenin clan entirely. And he gets destroyed by this by Jogo, yeah. And then he fights Gojo and just gets made to look like an absolute chump. Yeah, it's re it's really funny. It really helps like establish like no, again like the continuous establish the establishing that they've been doing, which is that Gojo was one hundred percent keeping them afloat. If it was not for him, there would be so many situations that get out of hand. And here's one of them where it's like this guy. The only reason that he was looking like a chump was because Gojo was making him look like a chump. Without Gojo, he just, like, insta-mercs three dudes easily. He gets rid of Maki, he gets rid of, um, the old man, he gets rid of, uh, salary man. He takes them all down. All of them go down. And it's amazing, because it happens, like, so quickly. He's like, that's one. That's the second. That's the third. And he's, like, very easily doing it. It's, uh, it's an amazing sequence. Uh, I also like that he had the, uh, when they're going to go wake up uh, Sukuna, he just had the fingers on like a barista. They've, it's always been in the OP, like the, the fingers, and it's always been really funny to me that it looks like a bunch of like tiny bullets, but they're just fingers. Um, yeah, it's in like a, like a sniper rifle 
bullet case. It is, but it is uh, demon fingers. Uh, obviously, when Sukuna wakes up, I really like the part where he's like, um, the reason he, his hand gets cut off and the reason is is because the uh, it was choking. It was on uh, Sukuna's throat because he, when he was uh, feeding him the fingers, it was still Yuji's body. Um, so that's the reason like he tells him to, you know, get off of me. <laughs> I don't know what you think you're doing, but now it's similar to the way from Mahito where he's like, listen... I'm only going to tell you once. I don't care about the circumstances, but if you touch my soul again, you're getting fucking destroyed. And it's a very similar, like, kind of feeling of, like, listen, I don't give a shit about what your reference is. You do not put your hands on me. <laughs> I don't care what the situation was. You should have thought better. And uh, that really goes to show here, because in general, that's the reason that uh, so many of them get, like, punished by him. Like, when he goes to go kneel, he thought too high of himself, so he gets, like, the fucking top part of his head just casually slashed off. Yep, it's so good. That's such a good scene. It is. It is fantastic. Uh, the two girls, they get their wording is just too much like a demand. Too much like a bargaining. And it was, it was like, I was thinking, even while I was uh, watching it, I remember reading it. Um, back then I was like, that is a very dumb thing to do. I remember, I think some people were like, how can you ever be on Sukuna's side after this? And I was like, I don't think you're supposed to be. <laughs> I think he is in fact a villain. Yeah, he's the bad guy. He is <laughs> you're the, not supposed he, to be on his side. No, you're not supposed to be on his side. Uh, but also he's being very fair. He could literally just kill them. They're, the, the amount of care that he would have for any of them is very little. So the fact that he just told them like, hey basically speak they spoke they spoke wrong therefore they die it is a very easy case to see here and yeah and i like the ending bit where he says like okay you know what already got my plans in place fuck your plans i don't care what your plans are don't worry about it but i will help if you can land a single blow on me and that is another good way of kind of establishing of what jogo is best at which is making people who would be on gojo's level of a threat and doing the job. <laughs> That's uh -huh. at least what it seems like here. Uh -huh. And we'll see how that works out in next episode. Even though we both know how this works out. But at least for now. I thought it was a very good uh, episode. And a good way to wrap it. Uh, to end it. And leave it in uh, mysterious suspense. To see how well he will do. And yeah. That's how I feel about this episode. How do you feel Zen? Uh, yeah. Great episode. The the scene where Sukuna comes back. Is one of the best scenes in the series. Um uh... When he uh, tells the girls to raise their heads and then immediately cuts the one girl's head off. It's so fucking raw. Like, it's <laughs> fucked up, obviously, but it's yeah. so fucking good. Um, there's a lot of weird dialogue around this episode, too, with a bunch of people being like, oh, it's sad about uh, that these little girls got killed. And then a bunch of other people are like, no, -uh, it, it's good. They were Hitler. I'm glad they got <laughs> it. Just, it's, like, it's really weird how hard you're like celebrating the death of two groomed children. Like, take it easy. Listen, they weren't the ones that were saying monkeys. I was, that was, you know. <laughs> and, you know, it, cause it, it, it's funny because um, I literally saw this debate happen where someone was like, it, it feels really weird to, like, look at these two little girls that got groomed by Ghetto to, like, you know, hate people and, and want all people to die and stuff to, like, cheer that they got killed, especially when. At this point, they're not even doing anything. All they want is basically for their father figure to not have his body be a corpse puppet anymore. Yeah. Um, and everyone's like, no, Ghetto never forced anyone to, to follow his teaching. That's Akutami said that himself. And it's like, yeah, but that's not what grooming is. Like, yeah. <laughs> you don't put a gun to their head and be like, you believe the same things I do now. It's just like, the, the backstory for these little girls is if, like, I mean, Hidden Inventory was not even that long ago, y'all, for God's sake. Yeah, they they are getting tortured in that village by people who think that their powers make them demons. Ghetto snaps and kills everyone, and is like, "Hey, if you want to come with me, you can come with me." Like, what are they gonna do? They're gonna not go with him and die in this village where there's no other people around. Yeah, and this person literally just saved their life. Yeah, so like, of course they go with him, and then they stay with him because they like him on account of the fact that it's like the first time they've been treated nicely by another human being. So, of course, they're going to like whatever he says and go along with whatever he says. They're fucking kids. Yeah. They're kids, and they, they have a warped sense of uh, being in general. Even they say it, like, when they're talking about, like, um, we'll never forgive Gojo. But him killing Ghetto 
we can accept because that was his only. Yeah, friend. they were still friends. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever this fucking <laughs> brain thing is, fuck him. <laughs> we're yeah, gonna. And it's less like, I don't know, like when you when you indoctrinate someone, that's not the same thing as forcing them. Like he's not holding them hostage, but that doesn't mean that he yeah. didn't like you know intentionally or unintentionally manipulate them in some way just by existing yeah it's uh, it's something that exists in real life I'm, is that anyone obviously not enough people this age are watching american history x anymore zen they just don't understand <laughs> where the uh, the idea of being raised in hate and where that leads you to it's it's it is not they, their views are of course abhor- abhorrent but that doesn't change the fact that like yo they didn't really have much of a shot what would be. <laughs> yeah, they never had a chance otherwise. No, they never had a different worldview. They never got to actually experience any of that. So at a certain point, it's like, yeah, I can understand being like, yeah, they had the shady things of this. But at the same time, you got to be at least a little bit understanding. If you're not, then <laughs> that's also an issue that we have. But that's another. Yeah, you don't, you don't have to be like, oh, they were good little girls, actually, because no, they weren't. But also, it feels weird to be quite that celebratory about their death. Yeah. There, there, there is a happy medium of, like, mmm. Sometimes the best course of saying something is just to go, mmm, and just mm-hmm. kind of move yeah, on. Yeah, just to give a little nod and just kind of the, mmm. Mmm, yeah. There's a, the, what is the, fuck, I forget, I forget where it was. I think it was, uh, it, there was actually, this is how it ends in one of the Simpsons episodes, where I think, uh, Mario, uh, the... Lisa says to Marge, Mom, is this a happy ending or is this a sad ending? And then she goes, it's an ending, dear. And uh-huh. we'll, we'll leave it at that. <laughs> it it is all you got sometimes. Yeah. yeah, it really is. Sometimes all you got is like, hmm. So when, you know, when Hulk Hogan passes and you don't see me going, oh, man, rip to a true wrestling legend. And you just see me go, hmm. Hogan died. You understand the reason why? <laughs> There's a lot of history here. There's a lot of things that sometimes is best in life to just go like, because mm, that's all you can really say, and that's the same thing for these little girls. I'm not out here celebrating, though I was celebrating the fact that she just got fucking cubed because that was sick. <laughs> that, that it was, was different... sick, yes. It was indeed very sick. Yeah. Let me take that, let me, just to be clear, I do not celebrate their death. But I also want to recognize that when she got her head cut off, I said, damn! Yeah. I, I'm not cheering for the fact that they died, but I am appreciating it. <laughs> I did like the way they went out. I thought that yeah. was sick. If you've got to go, getting cubed is a pretty cool way to go. Yeah. It's just like they say, if you're going to jump, do a backflip. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. Well. <laughs> uh, but yeah. I can understand. It's funny. The more as we get closer to the ending of season two, the more discussion about these. The, 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 it's, we're going to miss out another one, but we'll see if by next week, the next two episodes, there'll even be more uh, things to talk about. But yeah, it was definitely very interesting to see people be like, yeah, these two girls dying. It's a lot. Of, and it's also probably funny because there's also some people being like, well, we saw them from zero and then there's some people who like me who likely skip zero so they don't have any form of attachment and they're just like these are just two girls who just were asking for something and i don't see any real hesitation it's like no difference it's similar to uh dagon when he gets killed that's about the same level for some people just because they don't know that much about their backstory and stuff but anyway i digress that's uh that's it for do you have anything else to say Zan? Then that is it for Jujutsu Kaisen for this for this batch. Two not much episodes left, which I feel like I keep saying every single time we record, but it is it is in fact not very much. Uh, I forget how much it was supposed to be. Yeah, it ends at forty seven, and this was thirty nine. So seven episodes left. Eight. Wait. Eight? Oh shit, my numbering is so bad. <laughs> I forgot that we didn't see 40. We're stopping at 39. Um, but yeah, alright, we'll be back in two weeks to talk about more Jujutsu Kaisen. So... Yeah, that will, like, we got some good stuff coming. That, that, that's basically this arc, though. Shibuya Incident is really good. I guess as I think back to it. I say this every single time we record, but man, it's a hell of an arc. Um... 
We'll be back in two weeks to talk about episodes 40 and 41. Hopefully everyone enjoys episode 40, which will be out by the time you hear this episode. As always, we take two weeks to talk about the next one, and we will continue to do that. Um, if you want to see more current, up-to-date Jujutsu Kaisen talk, you can always go to Zen's channel, Shonen and Chill. If you want to hear me talk about it, follow my Twitter. <laughs> Whenever something too outlandish for me to escape the spoilers happens, and then I will gladly talk about it by then. Um, if you want more uh, videos featuring me, then you can always just stick on this channel where there's plenty of videos featuring me. Some of them also have a Zen in there. I am actually the proponent of the most Zenrado videos on YouTube. <laughs> I, that is true. It is 100% true. It is between me, the old uh, Dokkan Reddit YouTube, and then it's the third one is likely. And I, no, actually, at this point, you have more on your channel than you had the old uh, Dokkan uh, Reddit channel, I would say. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. You yes. definitely do at this point. There you go. Me number one, Zen number two in terms of Zenrado content. <laughs> but you can follow both of us if you want your full mix of uh, Zenrod stuff. Unfortunately, if you want just pure Wokey, you have to follow me. There's not a lot of Wokey on Zen's channel until he catches up to One Piece. Yeah. Oh, oh man. Takes a while. <laughs> Keep forgetting I have to do that. <laughs> Keep forgetting. Uh, by the time you finish... Nah, don't worry. You got like seven years until One Piece ends. Uh, and yeah, that's the ending of uh, Shonen Archive. So thank you very much for watching. We'll be back in two weeks to talk about Jujutsu Kaisen. But in Saturday, we should be talking about Kintama. And then hopefully next week, Kintama and then Kur uh, Kurogo's Basketball as well. <laughs> this time for sure, baby. Till next time, everyone. You guys have a good day, and we'll see you guys in the next one. Say goodbye, Zen. Goodbye, everybody. Peace out.